getting right to as 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 in map here. All of you, all of you have the map. Who's missing one? Dan, you're missing one? There you go. Anyone else? Missing a map? So what? Yeah. Actually, we wanted to start from, uh, uh, from an other part of the city just to give us some reference to where we are going. But anyway, we are now in the downtown. We are now in the downtown, which is part of the colonial Ohio. <laughs> Habitats and 
6th of October, I think, is one example of one way this is happening here in Egypt. Um, and we hope to show you some of the good points and some of the not so good points about uh, that kind of desert development in an urban context. Um, we are on this uh, this road here that's, that's uh, called the uh, 26th of July corridor that has actually been built essentially to link 6 October, which is a desert city about 35 kilometers or so from downtown Cairo to Cairo. It was intentionally built this way. When they built this corridor, there were, there were many buildings in the way because, as you know, Cairo has a lot of spontaneous developments or so-called informal areas that are not registered, they're not on the planning grid or any of that. So when they built this highway, they literally bulldozed through neighborhoods and will pass through some of those neighborhoods. So when I first moved to Egypt about 13 years ago, there were still half buildings next to this road because they had to put the road through, they had to knock half the building down. So you saw half a bathroom, half a kitchen, half a bedroom, half a living room. Uh, since then, they've more or less kind of tidied that up. It was quite dramatic at the time. We'll also drive through some of these informal neighborhoods on our way, and you will notice that Cairo, as it has evolved, has kind of evolved in, in bands. So there's a downtown core, then there's a band around that, then there's a wider band around that, and so forth. And each one of these bands represents a kind of different socioeconomic. So right now we're going through a kind of middle class area here in, uh, in Mohandasin. And we will, once we go through this band, we'll get to the next band, which is one of these informal areas where you'll see the quality of housing actually and the type of building changes dramatically. Uh, I don't know exactly, today doesn't seem quite so bad, but we also go past an area where they do a lot of garbage burning and uh, sometimes we'd have to drive through the, the, the smoke and the fumes and the pollution that's created by that. And that is on another band. It kind of represents another boundary as Cairo expands outward from the, uh, the center of the city. They tell a story about when the, the Olympic Committee came to visit Cairo because, you know, Egypt made a bid to get the Olympic Games a few years ago that they, they wanted to show the committee how modern Cairo was. So they took them on this very road to take them to 6 October to see the fancy 6 October and all the gated communities and everything. They made one big mistake, however. They had a huge banner that said, welcome committee. It was down here, welcome to the committee. As soon as they drove under the banner, they went into this zone where they're burning garbage and the car was enveloped in this horrible smell of burning garbage. So that there's, there's one example right down there. <laughs> so the committee said, no way. <laughs> and they went for Brazil, <laughs> Qatar or someplace like that. So this is what's happening. So you see how already things are transitioning. The buildings are looking kind of very different. There's a lot more sort of red brick. The, the streets between buildings are much narrower and so forth and so on. I want you to keep this image in mind because when we get to 6 October, you'll see that the thing is totally different. It's much more spread out. Uh, it's very difficult to walk around in 6 October. It's sort of built for cars and that sort of thing. And it could be in the United States as well as Egypt. It's that kind of place. So, so, you know, a lot, and a lot of the developments are named after suburban communities in the United States. And when you see it, it it's not surprising. You have a Beverly Hills here. You have Palm Hills Real Estate Development Company. You have lots of uh, uh, names and evoke places that are not in Egypt, but they're somewhere else. So, in a way, 6 October is built as a suburban community outside the context of Cairo. The irony, of course, is that you have this road linking Cairo with 6 October, 
and uh, it's not separated from Cairo. It's actually a kind of extension of Cairo. It's not really a separate city. One other thing, since I've been involved in agricultural research, and there, there's some more burning garbage. Uh, you'll see here there are fields still among the informal settlements and buildings that are going up. And we're going to go through one last little band of agriculture before we get up onto the desert plateau. One of the things I want you to notice is that the agriculture actually changes a bit here. Here you have pretty standard field crop cultivation. So you see there's a lot of wheat, that's that one there, it's about 40%. And you have a fair amount of clover, which they're harvesting right in that field over here. That's to feed animals. That's another 40% or so of the land use. And then you have the rest, which is about 20%. Some of them, which these are ornamental trees that they're growing, that's a nursery to serve the city's demand for ornamental plants. It's not just food plants. There's some more over there. You get some flowers, cut flowers here and there and so forth. So this is really a peri-urban agriculture. It's a kind of agriculture you would associate with any fairly large city because it surrounds the city and, and its market is the city and it's, and it's focusing on the city. The last little band of agriculture we're going to go through just down here is a, a horticultural area in which they're growing fruit trees. Right? You'll see date palms at the top and then you will see uh, mangoes, uh, papaya, and a few other things that are sort of lower, they're trees, but they're lower than the date palms. And then on the ground surface, they're growing other kinds of crops. So they have actually three layers of crops on the same little bit of area. And so it's a very intensive form of agriculture. Again, that's very characteristic of areas around cities that serve cities. So the land use is intensive and the land is extremely valuable. This is some of the most productive agricultural land in the world, by the way, because you have the Nile silt and you have the water. The tragedy is the city is eating it up. The city is moving this way and it's taking away this very valuable land, this very productive land. It's moving everywhere, <laughs> you're right. It's also probably coming down in a way. We're just down the hill, uh, down the ways here after we go through the palm belt. We're going to go up the hill and that represents the difference of uh, 5,000 years of agriculture here and only about 5 to 10 years of agriculture up there. And the reason is because there's a difference in elevation of about 10 meters. So the ancient Egyptians had to stop bringing Nile water because they couldn't lift it that last 10 meters. All of this is done by a gravity flow from the river basically through canals. And so that's where you know when the desert starts is when you can't bring Nile water to the desert and turn it into a, a green area. How, how many different uh, crops, uh, rotations are there? How many different harvests? Twice a year? Or? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, there's a field right down there in which you have two or three crops growing in a single field. And they do that so that there's always something coming up to harvest. They have a constant income from it. And you can grow here 365 days a year and 366 in a leap year. So there is always something growing. And as soon as they finish with one crop, they start preparing for the next one, as you see in that field there. And you will see all these different crops are in different stages of growth. Some are ready to harvest, like the wheat there. It's just about ready to harvest. They'll harvest that in a week or two. And that, that one, uh, that's chamomile there. They'll harvest that. There are dozens of crops, and, and so there's no, you know, in general, we talk about a winter season and a summer season. That's mainly for things like wheat and, and, and maize, corn. These are big uh, field crops. And beer seam also for some 
Exactly. Distance. Still, right? And what you can drill a shallow well or dig a shallow well right here. Uh, I don't quite know where the water table is in this location, but it's probably less than five or six meters, okay? But that's because we're in the floodplain. And what you get under that is the, the water there is basically drainage water from the irrigation water. It's just seeped into the soil. But you go, as soon as you go up the hill here, you don't have that. And the water, the water in New Cairo, for example, to the east where AUC is located, is 400 meters deep and it's salty. It's, it lose it. And the more uh, water in 6 October, there is some groundwater in that area. It's a different aquifer. It's about 120 meters deep, but it's being pumped out very rapidly. So in order to maintain the city, so I don't actually know that much about the water. In six, I was planning on using this trip as an opportunity to ask the soda guy where he gets his water from, but I would imagine it's, it's water that's pumped out of the Nile. This is actually a drain here. It's not an irrigation canal. I yeah. this, this is all Nile, yeah. Actually, the offtake for this is up in uh, Middle Egypt. It's in, um, it's coming from uh, where the water from Fayum goes in, it's come from Bar Yusuf and the water goes into Fayum and then the rest of the water comes down this side to Giza. So this water was diverted out of the Nile way up in the uh, uh, Middle Egypt. This has stayed agricultural land, whereas little pockets of just, I mean, is it, is it better protected or... I have no idea. I would say it's, it, it depends on who's got the land and what they, you know, this is all pretty much own land. And if a guy wants to sell it to somebody to, for something like whatever that is, he'll do it. But it'll be done on these individual little plots. Because all these, you see how the fields are not regular. Some are small, some are big, some are square, some are rectangular, some are triangle, whatever. So that, uh, the land would go piecemeal. A lot of the slab is owned by this fragmentation of ownership. Yeah, right? that's so, like, right. there are very small plots. That's right, like there, yeah. Yeah. Really, really yeah. So, my understanding is that it's quite inefficient in the sense that those different farmers just farm very different things. Yeah, so have a yeah. Very small yeah. that's why you get such a we call them postage stamps. Right. Postage stamp farms because there are all these little plots scattered around. And this is the wheat. That's still going, it'll, it'll stop next month and get the pot. You could theoretically go and all the time this was on the So if you come back in a couple of months or so, then all these crops are going to be different. Now we're moving into the orchard zone. So it's show, a weird show us a picture of the Yeah, I don't have one. <laughs> See, the soil is completely different. It's not brown looking, it's not dark, it's just sandy. And we've only just come up a little hill here. And, and, but we it's an incredible transition. And you notice that there, there are all these uh, hose pipes on the ground. That's how they brought water to these dead trees. This is a failed or the failed attempt at desert development. Is this the 10 meter elevation you were yeah, talking about? Yeah. That's it. The, the 10 meter elevation. Yeah. Uh, basically, mainly on the uh, desert land and stretching back to the. Uh, <laughs> to the uh, to the agricultural land. So in between actually you, have, you do have this industrial area which is subdivided and then given to people. There's a very small subdivisions of industrial area industry. So it's basically for storages and other uh, small industries. 
Um, what people actually did before the election of uh, 26th of July corridor, some people actually were smart enough to identify that they knew, they knew actually that the road would be built. So they bought the land and then transformed them into the commercial activities that is related to what they can call industry. So they built actually uh, some car uh, showrooms, actually major car showrooms for BMWs and uh, American cars and whatever French cars. So they use actually the industrial area in, uh, and switch it into uh, a very commercial area. This is one of the major uh, malls actually that was built on uh, a land that was not actually designated for malls. And they do have a battle in the court for like 10 years actually to get the mall built. So it's, uh, they started with building this stretch of shops that you see here actually, uh, two stories of shops. And then after that they won the battle in the legal court and then they built the mall, which is, they call it Dandy Mall, after their son actually, who was murdered in a nightclub. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a, anyway. <laughs> A lot of stories in here. There's a lot of stories anyway, but that's a. With Arahi, Ibnu, Danti, the one that left at the Khani with the people, so that the daughter was buried in the in one of the temples. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a tragedy. I don't know how many years ago. Anyway, and then actually here, actually this is the corner of a smart village. This smart village is really an important development. This is like a 300 acre of land uh, designed like uh, in the in the late 1990s. Uh, actually, it was uh, was thought of as uh, sort of a silicon new Silicon Valley uh, of Egypt, and ended up being like a sort of a touristic village, but designated for office buildings. So it's uh, this is the. Some of, it, uh, some of these places are actually designated for uh, ministry uh, headquarters. This, this uh, pyramid-like actually building what used to be a headquarter of the Prime Minister who is now in jail. Uh, the the former Prime Minister, yeah, Ahmed Nazif. Uh, and anyway, it's, uh, there's a lot of buildings within this area actually. And but they forgot actually it's interesting to look at the uh, development and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, the planning of it, it is it is actually a touristic village. It's not sort of really as a smart village or didn't, office building park. People didn't come in terms of the the uh, IT people that were supposed to serve. Right? So the, I believe there is here a, a Microsoft headquarter. Uh, uh, there is uh, some actually things uh, the Vodafone, some IT companies in here, but there is no real production of. Uh, Knowledge or research actually related to IT, so it's a uh, what is so it's a sort of yeah, and it's also interesting that the guys who designed this place actually work for Arabian uh, and Gulf development, so they model it actually after the Gulf development, so it is not really anyway. They gave it shapes that would look like uh, pharaonic, the white pharaon. I don't know the white pharaon, but anyway, <laughs> but uh, anyway. It's really interesting, but we're not getting into it. It's, I think it's not that interest, interesting to get in, but it's uh, uh, real. Yeah. I just want to say, yeah, I tell my friends this is in terms of architecture that the uh, uh, smart village is uh, uh, neo Ptolemaic. As you see, they've built all these what, 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 on the roof, they have this sort of uh, cabello gray. Yeah. <laughs> and they have the pyramid y things. And, you know, all of that. Neo Ptolemy. Yeah. So it's Neo Ptolemy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's, really, it's really interesting. Uh, we, we cross the gates. So we now we cross the gates to Alexander. So we are now heading to Alexander. We're not really heading to Alexander, but. Uh, but anyway, direction of Alexandria. Uh, actually, behind this smart village, there is still actually industrial area uh, behind it. And now, actually, the guys who who bought the land behind it for industry are now uh, seizing the chance to transform their uh, properties into commercial uh, areas. So it's not really uh, an industrial area. So this is what. It almost must. Be. It must also be it's very expensive real estate. Yeah, it is. It is actually. It is expensive, and I believe it's not all actually uh, sold, it's rented. 
Uh, I don't know really about the structure of, uh, uh, of the administration of this area, but they do have a sort of organizational administration for this particular area. After that, we are. We will be. We will be. Actually, this is the headquarter. This is ACG, the headquarter of the guys who designed the place. Uh, uh, they do have a headquarter in Medina Tass, and this is the second headquarter, opened by the prime minister at that time. Yes. What's the advantage to the offices in Smart Village? And what's the advantage of uh, Mubinil having a headquarters in Smart Village to they get besides prestige or is it prestige? Uh, actually, it, it should have been a sort of sort of an incentive, but I don't know what kind of incentive that they do have. Uh, what I understood that uh, basically the minister actually wanted to develop this area and he asked these companies to come in, but there is no really incentive. From my point of view, I don't, I'm not sure actually, but it's uh, the idea is totally missed of uh, having an IT community actually working and researching. This is this is the main point. Other than that, actually, uh, people actually come here for uh, services. They don't have services, a decent place for uh, office. Uh, I don't know. That's it. This is a very, to your right, this is a very old industrial area that preceded actually the. Uh, the Abu Awash and preceded also the Smart Village. It used to be uh, a place for storages, a place for, place for uh, uh, car companies actually to assemble their cars. They started assembling cars in here actually and then and then it sort of uh, died away actually and gave away to uh, 6th of October place. This is the green belt of 6th of October in Sheikh Zayed, which is uh, mostly developed uh, uh, by by people actually who bought the land for like five acre or ten acre and then they built their own villas within it. Actually, they started this year. I heard they started this year to pull out the land from the guys who did who, who de either develop it uh, for certain purposes or didn't develop it yet because actually a lot of people actually bought these lands sort of a, in a, for, for speculation reasons. So they they started to withdraw some some lands. At least I heard a couple. Of, uh, this is a huge green belt actually, this is a not small one and, and the prices of this actually green belt because of the speculation like six doubled I believe and then they, they are now getting down again. Building starting to build so, so a lot of intersection. Uh, the air part of Harbour Qahira is a West Cairo air base. Uh, we start actually, we we'll start to meet maybe in one or two kilometers. It's very and then to your left is the start of uh, uh, developments of Sodek, I believe. Partly, I'm not sure. But it's, uh, yes, it's, uh, this is part of the uh, Sodek development. And this is the place, and, and, and this one to your left actually is the one that we are going to get in.